Thanks for coming out. This is, uh, I'm calling to order the select board hearing, continue, a continued hearing in order to receive evidence on whether to discontinue or designate as a trail a portion of the class four section of town highway seven. Um, what we're gonna do tonight is, first of all, we have, we, the, the select board requested that the city attorney, the town attorney, prepare a, um, ask for a survey of the road. And a survey has been prepared. The surveyor is here tonight to, I, I guess what I'm gonna ask you to do is come up and have a seat. Um, <coughs> Timothy Cowan is the surveyor, and what we he provided through our town attorney, Joe McLean, who is here, um, he provided the survey to us. We in turn distributed to the parties to this proceeding and posted it. Um, so what I'm going to do tonight is ask Tim to kind of summarize and present his survey and then give all of you a chance to ask any questions you want or make any additional testimony you want. I think likely today at the conclusion of this, we will close the public hearing because we haven't closed the public hearing before, we just continued it. I think tonight will be the last night and we'll close the public hearing, but we'll see. So why don't we start? Tim, welcome. Good to be here. Uh, so, so please uh, go ahead and present to us the, your, the results of your survey. Okay, how much time would you like to spend? Is it, it could be a half an hour, but I could shorten it to 10 minutes. I think 10 minutes. <laughs> right. You like that? I yeah. I think there are certain people who are able to read, certain people will have read the whole thing, others your conclusions, but I think somewhere in the middle of the future. Well, I have, a, I have some uh, maps to use as exhibits, and it'll be a little bit tough in this situation, though, to be all right if I like, stand up and hear them. Oh, that would be great, too. Just the, the problem is whether well, I think you bring it what direction so they It would be great so that both, both yeah. we and the audience can see yeah. And he can, okay. he can be then a white and, yeah. and that's it. show the run. Why don't you just have a vote? Should we enter it into evidence before? We well, I think it doesn't matter when you enter it in, but I would just have Tim describe briefly what his background and okay. experience is, so that's on the record. Okay, I'll take So that. just to be clear, this is Joe McLean, he's our town attorney. He's I advising. Did, I did introduce him. Thank you, Joe. Uh, yeah. Before you start, wait, before okay. you start, you know what? I would like to move to enter this. Joe, should we, is this by motion? No, we just, yeah. we don't need to move to end it. Okay. No, okay. At this point, yeah. this time. Okay, so I'd just have, like to... We have two things to enter. But you will eventually enter. Right. Okay, well, we'll do that. Go ahead, then, Joe, tell us about yourself. Of you course. Yeah, that's, that's good. Thanks, Joe. Um, my name is Tim Cowan, and I'm a licensed land surveyor. I'm a senior surveyor for a company called Civil Engineering Associates in South Burlington. And what Joe asked us to do back in the summer was to review town records and do what surveying we needed to do in order to get a handle on where Town Highway 7 begins and ends, or began and ended, um, and what's going on in between. Um, make sure you understand that I'm not here to give any advice on what to do with the road. I'm just telling, uh, explaining where it is and where it begins and ends. Um, those of you that are familiar with this, with the survey bill from 1840, it was the, uh, the original description of this, this town highway, what we're calling seven now. And uh, those of you who are familiar with it, remember that it starts at the east line of Alonzo York's land. And so the first question I had was, uh, what did Alonzo York, where was his land in 1840? 
And luckily, the, the land records were quite clear on that, uh, that in 1838, he acquired all of Lot 22 in Division 3 um, from, from a man named Ely. And uh, this, this is a plan of their lotting system in, in the whole town of Pallas. Um, there's three different divisions. There was a first division of these large lots kind of in the middle of town. And then the second division was this L-shaped part. It's uh, a little bit over 100 acres a piece. And the third division is this tier of lots along the line with Worcester on the, on the west side of town. Um, and lot 23, the division three, is up here in orange. Where is that? Is I'm sorry? That, is that is part you survey? I didn't survey the whole parcel, I surveyed the road. That's the but, Schultz lot. Okay, that's what I'm asking. What oh, okay. is that? Well, we'll get to that. Okay. We'll get to it all over. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Schultzes uh, are on this lot here, which is 22, just oh, the east okay. of it. The one that's filled in completely is uh, lot 23. If you can yeah, go to the next page, we got a blow up of it here. So, in 1838, uh, Alonzo York got the whole of that lot 22, and then just a year later, he subdivided it and uh, conveyed the south one half of it to uh, Willard Han Hanford. And so I'm going to just draw a line across here. Um, that's how the descriptions are written at this time, too. When, when York got that parcel from, from Ely, it was the whole of Lot 22 in the third division. That was the description. And then when he conveyed a year later, he conveyed the south one half of his Lot 23 to, to Hanford. 22. Thank you, 22. 22. Um, so the description calls for this road to begin at the east line of Alonzo York's land at a point that's six rods, which would be 99 feet, north of the northeast corner of Hanford. So that puts it up in here. How many rods? Six rods. Six rods. Which is 99 feet. So, the, the next thing, the, the description then gives a series of three bearings and three distances and says it ends in the, at the center of West County Road. So, uh, the first thing I did after looking up the land records part of this was to go up to where I believe the, the lot line would be and sure enough there's a, there's a very obvious stone wall along pretty much this whole lot line. Um, between 22 and 23. Yeah, between 22 and 23. That's very well marked for the stone wall, then uh, and some barbed wire fence traces. And nowadays it's painted bright red. I'm not sure who painted it, whether it was uh, the owners now or of, of this lot or the owners of 23. Um, let's switch to the next page. Can you, can you re-clarify, I asked okay. you if Schultz lot was lot 23 in Division 3 and you said it was lot 22. And I'm looking at a, an let's ortho see, photo and it says lot 23 Division 3 is Gary and Jill Schultz. And that's what the lot on the, to the right of where you drew the this, line. This is lot 22. Right, this so lot 23 to, to the right, this, this that's the Schultz lot. Schultz. Right, so, so you, you were in, so that's why I asked you if that was a Schultz lot, and you said their lot is 22 earlier, so okay. I'm sorry. Okay. So the Schultz is 23. Yes. 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 That's what I was confusing. Okay. Okay, sorry, I just spoke. Anyway, we've got York in 23, and nowadays Schultz in 22. 
Um, these are just for, you've probably all seen these. This is uh, Walling's map. So I'm confused. You just said Schultz was now 22. I'm sorry. Schultz is 23. 20. Yeah, okay. okay. Go ahead. It was 22, 23. Right. Schultz, Schultz is 23, was... Division 3. I'm looking at it right here. Okay. Uh, it's written in the report. Yeah. Right. Sorry. That's what I'm looking at. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> okay. I'll go ahead. Um, this, this is just a Walling's map from 1858. And I'm just showing it so that you can see that at that time they were, they were showing a road up in this area with somebody named Parmenter living at the end of it. And now we'll switch to the next sheet. And this is a portion of the Beers Atlas from 1873. And I'm going to point to, point to the road here. This is Town Highway 7. Um, begins begins the county road, or one end of it is the county road, and the other end they're showing at uh, Homestead marked L of Car. Uh, the reason I'm showing this is just to kind of I'm trying to go chronologically through the history of the road a little bit, but uh, we'll get more to the survey description in a minute. One thing that's interesting here is if you look at Deer's Atlas. Underneath the road, there's a small figure that says 160. That means 160 rods. And so they, they uh, customarily show distances in rods between intersections or to show lengths of roadways. And uh, the 160 rods, though, brings you all the way to Mr. Carr's house at that time, which isn't necessarily part of the town road. We'll go to the next bit, please. Right. This, this, uh, you'll be ha having a hard time seeing this from the distance, but this is an aerial photo from 1942. And I chose this because the road shows up quite well in 42. In later aerial photos, it doesn't show up well at all because of, because of trees and so forth. But I will point out, um, you can see this edge of woods here. That's that lot, lot line between 22 and 23, which is the, where I was telling you about the stone wall and blazed trees and all that. Um, and then you can see the road wandering down here. I've uh, shown the Schultz's house. I've added that, uh, plotted it on there just for context. It wasn't there at that time, of course. But there was a house down here near the intersection that was uh, shows up on Beers Atlas as the Prey place. So I'll call it the Prey's for now. Um, if you look way out here, near, near Vanna's nose, <laughs> way up here, there is a, uh, a little block that is a uh, homestead that, that corresponds with the car house that we showed you on the Beers Atlas. That's basically the end of, of that roadway. Uh, I think there's both a house and a barn in there. You can see a little bit of signature of a roadway along here. There's bushes and stuff growing up alongside the road. What you can see if you were able to look at this up close is you can see the intersection of that roadway and our stone wall at the, at the lot line, um, which is where the description of the 1840 highway, what we're calling Town Highway 7 now, begins there and then goes down the hill, cross, and connects. You're saying it doesn't begin until. That's right, it doesn't begin to here. And this, is, and this is the important thing is that, uh, I mean, the, the question that kept coming up is where does the road, the town's right in this road end? And it's at Alonzo York's line. And the first thing we had to do was find out where Alonzo York's line is, and that's here. So the description starts there and then goes three courses and three distances down to where it intersects with the uh, West County Road, so-called. Um, 
if you were able to see this up close, you know, you want to take it around? Sure, you can go right. In 1942, if you look at the the line of trees that's coming down the hill from west to east, from near that from near that lot line, if you look really closely, you can see light marks on each side of the trees. This is a really steep part of the, the road. It's uh, average 17 degree, or 17 percent from down here up to here. It's really steep. And anyway, what I'm getting at is that you can see a little bit of the road on each side of these trees. And I think what was happening by 1942, the road was so eroded, as you all, a bunch of you have seen it, um, that it was being traveled on either side of the old road. And you can actually pick that up a little bit in this 1942 uh, area. And then they come, the two roads, the road on each side of the gully, come together again about the area where it gets, it flattens out. Um, you can see a cluster of trees along here, a lot of trees, and that corresponds with uh, some stone wall that's still there to this day. And then the other thing that shows up really well on this map is that you can see the three roads coming together. Um, County Road, which is called West County Road, Town Highway 5, Town Highway 8, I believe you call it, and Town Highway 7. Um, this road came later. This was West County Road was around 1808. The road we're talking about is 1840, and then this one was 1851. They all come together out here, close to where the Schultz's driveway enters West, uh, West County Road today. Can I ask a clarifying question? Yes. Um, so you mentioned there are, there are roads, there's indication of roadways on either side of the gully. The actual town right of way is where? In, right. in, in the gully? That's coming. Okay, okay. good. <laughs> Next Thank chapter. You. Thank you. Yeah. So, in the, in the report that I emailed that you have all seen, this upper map is overlaid on an on a aerial ortho photo. I've turned it off for this exhibit so that people can see the line work a little bit better. But from the starting point in the lot line between 22 and 23, um, there's three compass courses like this. Calls for, I'll have to read the distance because I can't remember. It, the first one is 54 rods, which amounts to 891 feet. That's the place where it's the steepest and the road is washed out the most. And the, the, what you can see of roadway now seems to be wandering out of the right of way on the south side, right in, in this first, in the upper half of, of this area. So the, what we were looking at and thinking was, was the highway was, uh, is really outside of the right of way. But it's in the right of way at the very beginning, and it's back in the right of way when you get about halfway down the hill. This isn't unusual. It's a case where roads get eroded, and people start going around it, and pretty soon they're way off on the side to get beyond the, the steep banks of these gullies. Um, second course, the present, present roadway, I'm calling it a roadway, but it's in, in, per, uh, in quotation marks. It's not much of a roadway. But it comes very close to the edge of the right of way at this, this angle point. <clears throat> and then where things flatten out again, um, there's very little sign of the roadway today. And that's because it's out in the open country and has been probably um, plowed and so forth. I imagine if you really needed to, you could find a 
archaeologist or a geomorphologist, they could cut some trenches across there and you could locate where the road was uh, based on the stratigraphy of the soils beneath the ground. But anyway, uh, let's see, we did have a line of trees on one side which seemed to correlate really well with the uh, south side of the right of way. <clears throat> but it's the third course down here that's causing most of the confusion. Uh, in the description, it calls for the bearing, and it says, thence this bearing, six rods to the center of West Canada. And so you get there, and you're clearly your way up by Schultz's house here, but almost at the end of their driveway. And it's clearly further than 99 feet to West County Road. Um, so first question as a surveyor is, how far is it? And it turns out that it's 36 rods rather than six. Um, and I'm talking really close <laughs> to 36 rods. And uh, there's, in, in surveying, it's a, it's a rule of construction that we use all the time. When there are monuments and there are bearings and distances, the monuments control the end of the line. So if it says six rods, or if it said 100 rods to West County Road, you would be going to West County Road and stop right there. Um, I think the confusion has been that People are adding up the, the record distances, including this just 99 feet here instead of almost 600 feet, and, uh, and measuring up the hill from West County Road and coming up well short of the lava line. And that's, to me, it looks like that's caused a lot of confusion. Did, you, port, yeah, did you find this Brown's Mill Dam? No, but we know where it is. It's, um, there's the evidence of it being a dam, right? Well, the, the, the road is evidence of where, it, where, where the road, of where our road ends. I mean, West County Road is evidence. Yeah. But it crossed the dam. Um, it's this, we know where the stream is here. Right, there's and, a wetland area there. Right, okay. And the, uh, the road was, the West County Road was altered in 18... 36, I want to say, so that it would go across that dam. Um, but as it happens, you, you pretty much have to assume that the, the stream was where the stream is now, and which we can find. <laughs> and uh, it is a little bit, well, the other thing is that it doesn't say the center of the dam. We can't tell where that is. And I don't know how long the dam was. So if you go six rods from up uh, West County Road, um, you're presumably at the end of where the dam was in 1842, but I can't prove that. So you think that yep. we're dealing with the Scribner's error? Yeah, I really do. So if it was 36 rather than 6? If it was 36 instead of 6, it would make perfect sense, and it would, it would be the way we've drawn it here. So would you present your conclusion to us? Sure. Well, hang on, before you do that, okay. building on Mark's clar clarification, I guess, amplifying your point, make you sure we understand it. It's a scrivener's error that has read six in, what, deeds or something? Uh, only in that, only in the survey bill from 1840s. Okay. I don't know of any other descriptions of that road. Okay, and then, but it, but it should be properly 30, 36 and the kind of bolstering point you made is that you rely in surveying on the monuments which right. are the lot line which you've clarified right. and west county road right those are the monuments are the and monuments. the road ran between the two correct okay they in fact you'll like find town road. town roads described sometimes without any bearings or distances and they'll just say starting at captain scott's Dooryard and ending at Widow Jones' house. Stuff like that. Well, let, him, let him finish and then I will open it to ask him, for all you guys to ask him anything you want. Okay. Just, just so everybody's clear on the importance of the monuments at the end. It's, the monuments can't be easily mistaken. It's easy to make errors 
in measurement. You can make transcription errors writing down the measurement in the field. And then the person writing the instrument at the town clerk's office has another chance to make an error. But the, the beginning point at the lot line and the finishing point at the center of West County Road are, are very obvious. And if, you, if it's 36 instead of six rods, then it all falls together very nicely. Um, that's it. So your conclusion as to the beginning and end of the road, if you would repeat? Yeah. The road begins at the lot line between 22 and 23, and which is clearly marked with a stone wall, barbed wire, and red blazes, and has been used as a lot line for at least since the 1830s, before that, as far as we know. Um, and the other end of it is at the uh, center line of West County Road. I was a little bit confused a little bit because I've seen some maps that call this road um, West County Road too, and not being a native, I didn't know about that. But that road came in later, and that was like 11 years after our road that we're talking about. Um, that's about it. Okay. We were going to take independent testimony, but let's start with anybody who has would like to ask questions, Tim. Tell us your name. My name is Charles Flower. Thank you for your professional opinion. My question has to do with the monument to monument, um, the way that we're looking at this last leg. Yep. I understand that monuments can't be moved, a corner of a stone wall, a granite post that's buried in the ground, and that can deviate from a, a defined distance on a plan. Yep. I understand that yep. clearly. I'm wondering what the limit is for something like that, because we're talking about increasing the length of this road by 36% of the length of the road. So that's uh, uh, adding 500 feet to this seems yeah. completely uh, out of this out of this world. So yeah. I just want to understand, like, what would be the limit when you wouldn't consider the monument to monument? The 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 thing is here is that we know where West County Road was even at that time, and we know where the where the lot line was at that time. So there's no so, chance that the West County Road was in a, or yeah, yeah, there, yeah, there there was a small alteration in in thirty six. Um, but it was just in this section here, and it was it was minor. It was to to make sure they could put the road right across the dam. They that basically was used the dam. 1836 or 1836. 1836. So is it increasing the size of the lot? lot no, no, not changing any of the lot lines. Um, the lot lines, in fact, the only place they come into play here is for that starting point near the top of the hill. I think in my understanding, going back to this question, yep. what I'm hearing from you is when you know where the endpoints are, yeah. really that's what you go by, regardless of the distance error. And in this case, you're especially impressed by the fact that it was six versus three six. Yeah, that's what that would have been made. harder to explain if it said uh, 10 instead of 36, for instance. Um, but but as far as the limit, I, I understand your question is, you know, how wrong can you be? Right. Um, pretty the, wrong. You can be pretty wrong because numbers can get written down wrong, um, and and they do frequently. Um, in this case, you look at the original instrument, and it looks like almost a gap before the six. And so my my pet theory, and I can't prove this, is that the the scrivener is writing down that number and he's looking at the surveyor's note, notes and can't tell whether that's a th three six or a five six and so he just puts the six and he's gonna ask he's gonna ask Robert later on which what number that was and just never never happens. I don't know if we want to go down that rabbit <laughs> hole of coming up with various things that could have gone wrong don't have have to. 160 years ago but um of course, I'm concerned adding by a factor of six 
that last leg of the uh, of the survey, and 500 feet is not insignificant. And so, so I'm not I'm not comfortable with glossing over it and, and moving on and just saying, well, it's probably any number of errors. That that seems um, well, the thing is, like, you're, you're right that it's a lot of it's a lot of feet. It's almost 500 feet, but it's only one digit. It's one right. digit that didn't get written down. Right, but to add another digit, a number of magnitude onto that digit to make it work. I mean, I work with data every day. I would never do that. I'd lose my license because that's just not proper. Well, of course. So you can't just say a 36. Ah, it's probably supposed to be 36. That, that's completely. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying it's probably 36. I'm saying that that would be the conclusion that one would have to reach for all of the other data to, to fit. You, yeah. you take all of the data to con into consideration. We've got pieces of fence, we've got the road itself, we've got stone walls, we've got lines of trees, we've got old maps. Um, I think we can there's, a lot of, there's a lot of data there besides just that 36. But what we're not considering is the reasons why that survey could be accurate. Because it was accepted by, by the town at the time. So what we haven't talked about yet is what, what could there have been 160 years ago that would have made that, that survey correct. And now we're trying to guess 160 years later. But really, there could have been a number, any number of reasons where the like, that road is correct, as, as was accepted by the town. Well, we know it's, it's just a standard rule of construction in reading any deeds or highway descriptions. You know where it begins and you know where it ends. You, you can pay, you can pretty much throw out all the numbers and know where it begins and ends. Can you go back you over how you know where it ends? I'm sorry, can you clarify again? I know it's the beginning of your talk. How, no, where, where it begins, I guess. Okay. That's what you're calling it. Okay. How do you know it begins okay. as a town road? Okay, because we know we know that this is the first thing we the first question was Alonzo York, where was his east line? Mm -hmm. Go to the land records. His he owns uh, lot twenty-two. The east line of lot 22, we know from, from our first map that I was showing, we know generally speaking where those lots are from doing surveys further south in the same tier of lots. I know where those lots are and their, their general bearing, general lengths of those lines. And when I went to the place where I thought it would be, sure enough, there's stone a wall. big stone wall, and, and everybody's been using it as the lot line. But I, get that, I understand that part. Okay. That's the lot okay. line. I'm not disagreeing. How do you and know? Then we know, we know okay, and then we know roughly where half the half lot line was because we know the dimensions of the lot. But he's asking. But how do you know that the, know road the road begins there? Begins there. Okay. The western end of the road. Yeah. Because it, that's where it says in the, well, in the survey. Okay, that was the it question. It begins at the lot line. It, to paraphrase it, it begins at the lot line, six rods north of the corn, the Got north it. Okay. Of, northeast corner of Got it. Yeah, Got I'm it. sorry. Okay, that's, that's and, and oh, by the way, there's, the you. fence line has a big gap in it right there. Yeah. Right? Oh, no, we saw yeah. a bunch of us have yeah. walked. I, I agree yeah. that's the lot line. I just yeah. didn't know how you knew the road began. Sharon, okay. you had a question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep, sorry. Uh, well, no, I think I just wanted to, you, you, you just repeated to part of what I wanted to say is it's not just one data point. It's the six rods north on the lot line. The lot lines, as they were laid out originally when towns were chartered, are super clear. And it's not so much adding 500 feet. Nobody's adding. It's it's clarifying that the the, the road that included that 500 feet as evidenced by it started here and it ended here, and that is what you rely on. And if, if I understood you originally, right? If if there was no dimension at all, if there were dimensions and bearings only for these first two lines, and we just stopped here a little bit west of the Schultz's mm -hmm. driveway. Mm -hmm. And then the description didn't even mention any bearings or distances, but said two County center Road. line of West County Road. We know where it is. The bearing helps us a, a lot in figuring out where right. the line west. Right, but exactly. By the way, it fits really well. Is there anyone yeah. in the yeah. audience who... And the historic survey. 
The part I can't agree with is they made a 600 foot mistake. I know what you're saying. I don't buy it. Uh, we can disagree. This is America. So uh, I don't know. I mean, it's, if, if you can't believe, if you think they made a mistake there, maybe they made a mistake somewhere else. Let's Maybe see. it didn't go from Alonzo property. Maybe it went from French Buckledorf's. Oh, okay. Just don't know. I mean, you, you know, at what point can, you know, I, you can't believe this, but you can't believe this. Uh, I ain't going there. And that the 600 feet error is not even realistic. Huh. Okay. What, what difference does, I mean, so if you're going to yell at me, what difference does it make? It's 500 and 600 feet. What does it do? It just it just gets you to West County Road where where the road the road was clearly trying to go from Alonzo's road Alonzo's line so, to the West County Road. So so if this 500 or 600 feet that people are talking about wasn't there, the road would end before you got to the county road. Exactly. Yes. Right. And that's right. that's why I have trouble right. taking right. right. Gary's no, I get it. idea. If you if you start at the top of the hill, Gary, and you're coming down. It just then, ends in the middle of there. Then, then it ends in the front of your house. And, and or farther up, yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Which okay. seems well, unlikely. Measure from the county road up, yeah. that road stops at a trail, a logging road, a, a wagon road, off to the left. Maybe they measure from the county road up and go, oh. We're the town, we only want to take responsibility as far as this road here. I think it's evident from the, the words on the actual deed that they're trying to build a road from Alonzo's East Line to the West County Road. Okay. So the only, the only, if you want to argue about where Alonzo's line was, then that's cool with me. No. <laughs> Maybe they did, you know, basically, okay. We're going to lay on the road back. It's going to go from the lines up down the county road. Okay. Let's measure it. And they go, this is as far as it's going to go. The town is only going to take responsibility for this budget. Yeah. It's we still don't want anymore. It's still, it's still, if you just ignore all of the dimensions, it still goes from Alonzo's line to the center of West County Road. I think, uh, yep. you think you yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think, I think we've yep. beaten this issue of, that mm -hmm. is, one, our surveyor is saying what really matters is the beginning point and the end point. You guys are saying an error so big calls into question the whole thing for me. <coughs> we hear you. Is there any other question of the, of Tim, the surveyor? Tim, thank you very much you for your service. Now, you let me, could we please enter the survey and the map into the record? Money for all of Tim. And uh, well, Tim, can we have that to all? I'll make the motion to enter uh, Tim's, Tim's exhibits uh, completely into the record. And report. And report. Okay, we haven't. We've done motions before. I was listening to the lawyer. That's what you're doing. You don't need it. It doesn't matter. matter. Okay, so we're entering. So we I'll second that. that. <laughs> okay, we're entering. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 We are entering the survey and the maps into the record. We have another map. And the report. And, and the, right, the maps and the report. Yes. And that's exhibit 23. We have an exhibit 22 we need to take care of, which came in. After our last meeting on July 17, 18, yeah, this was um, the conservation commission. A conservation commission minutes, where they withdrew their previous letter um, in support of keeping Town Highway Seven, and they have now um, asked to have that removed. And they have a here's a copy of their minutes. Um, do you want to know what the minutes say? Yes. Okay, Town Highway 7, potential discontinuance. Stephanie noted that in her cover letter to the select board attaching the CC's letter opposing 
And this continue, and she had added that after learning more about the issue, the commission may revise its position. Josh Schultz explained why his family wants the road discontinued. Stephanie reminded the commission that the select board, not the commission, has to decide whether Town Highway 7 should be discontinued and suggested that the legal question of how the how long the town road is and whether it has on the Schultz property or extends further may have to be resolved by a court. Stephanie told the commission that Eric Sorensen had said in the context of the ancient roads issue that any new or upgraded roads in a forest block can create habitat fragmentation and the town already has a lot of public roads. Larry said that if we had known the road did not extend past the Schultz's line, we would not have recommended what we recommended, which was to keep the road. Julie said that if there are any children playing the road, it should be discontinued. Neil said that the road is a town asset, and it does not matter whether it extends past the property line and what we should be careful of setting a precedent. Mark said that the roads are our town square, but we should withdraw the letter because we do not have consensus among the committee. Where's Mark too? Mark Brown, who's on the committee, Conservation Commission. Thank you. Mary moved and Julie seconded that we tell the select board that at this meeting we voted to withdraw the letter we had previously sent. Thank you. So and this was their minutes of August 3rd. Can I ask a clarifying question? So does, does this have the effect of formally removing both pieces from our record or do they just both stay in? I would just leave them both in. Right. Okay. Right. Um, <clears throat> So, what I'd like to do now is give anyone in the audience a chance if they have anything additional to say that they haven't said. We do have on the record every all of your testimony, and not only is it on the record, we heard it. We actually heard it. So you don't need to repeat anything that you've said previously. In other words, we know your positions if, unless they've changed. If, if anybody's changed a position or wants to say anything in response to this the new evidence that was introduced tonight, please feel free. Yes. Hi. Doug Looney, okay, you know me. You know, I don't know too much about what's going on, but I, I don't like giving up town right away for other people. I want to leave it. I've been in here, I've been in this town for almost 80 years, and I'm born and raised here, so I know pretty near every road. I've walked that road down through what you're talking about, and we need to leave some of these roads open for snow machiners, and people want to go on a nature walk, and bicycles, and we need to leave this stuff. And you know, I was set, I'm set on my behind years in watch this town, give all these little back roads up, give them up. They give them all up. One right up here, right up over here, right out here, went up over to Jack Hill. The one up there went right down over to, to Vern Clough and came out on Route 14. You threw all that stuff up. That's crazy. People get a little chunk of land and they go crazy because they got some land they don't want nobody on it. Well, I got a lot of land too. I don't care who walks on it, just as long as they respect it and don't leave the garbage or anything like that. But you know, I know the old select board, you were on it. Probably you went through. <laughs> and you give, let them take these old roads, take and put them up, and just get rid of them. We don't need to do that. We need to keep these roads open for people, everybody to walk. Make this town a lot nicer. You can walk around, ride your bikes, do what you want to do. So these roads up, and I bet you snow machine has come down that road. I know where that road is. I walked that road a good many times. I hunted into it. I probably dragged deer down there. And I think you've left that road, I can't remember the name of the pond. There's a pond right down there. You know what the name of that pond is? Reed does. What's the name of the pond beyond? It's not posted. It's not posted? My land? No, no. it's a pond down below. Off the mountain. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That is, yeah. Yeah, it's Hawkins Pond. Yeah. Yeah. There's a road right through there, because that's through the trail or whatever you want to call it, to the pond. Yeah. Okay. One of the old round silos used yeah. to be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I know all of this. You're not telling me anything I don't know. 
you know, but we give that stuff up, and I hate it. I sat on my butt, and I kick myself in the butt every day, thinking about what we did. We can't just, somebody gets a piece of land, and they think they own the whole damn world, you know? And, that, for example, Lightning Ridge, where I live. Go down the hill, down the hill. That road used to go, did I show you? Go down through the woods on the right-hand side, very obvious. But the old farmers all got together and they dragged the stone off my land, put them down in the road, and you'll see Lightning Ridge Road where it's always frost heaves and wet. You know what I'm talking about? That's because these field stones in there and the water runs in there. Used to come out down. You know where uh, uh, Ron Thompson was? Right? That road used to go right straight through his door yard. But you know what? They moved it. They moved it down by, down in the middle, down in the gully. Roy Bowles did that. Right down through. And I'm not probably off the subject, but I want to congratulate you guys for making the right decision about the town roads and what's going on in this town. I hear a lot what's going on. You guys are right. Probably I'm talking out of line here. You know, you're not talking. But you are right, you know? I can mention just one thing, and I won't talk about it. Anybody wants to know about the town, <coughs> come and see me. I've been here for almost 80 years, mowing years. <coughs> my grandfather was the first one I ever went to Montpelier to represent the town of Calais. My brother, my dad, and everybody, all were town representatives, truck boards, land board, and I was on the road committee. You, you know, I was on the road committee. And I talked to the road commission, and we told him this. He, he never had any records, and I wanted records. When the truck was greased and changed the oil, we never had any of that. And now, I'll just give you one example, and then I'll shut up. We, our road commissioner wanted to trade, trade our truck in, and most of you have heard this. Most people in town don't know that. But firmly, he, he, we, he fixed his truck all up. Fixed it, painted it, got it all ready, it looked nice. And then he comes to the select board, and you went on it, okay? And you went on it. I you was. Went. I was. And you were one. You're two guilty ones. That's <laughs> what? No. No, really. So, he traded it in for a, two, a 10 wheeler. What was that? 250,000, 230, whatever it was. 100. Well, everything. We found out about this after. Hmm? We found out about it afterwards. I know. So he takes this truck that he wanted, didn't like it, didn't want it. He traded it in for a new one, big one, 10 wheeler. He turns around and he buys it back himself for his own fleet. Both. That is bull, and he's still running that truck today. Thank you. Uh, and I can tell you a lot more. <laughs> uh, anyone else like to testify? Yes. Thank you. I, I wanted to come up here and, and um, speak to your name. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm Charles Flower. Thank you. And Schultz's uh, son-in-law. Yeah. So I. I'm not going to speak any more about the survey because we beat that horse to death, but I will say 500 feet is an unacceptable amount of length to, to add to a, uh, any, any measured roadway without much more review. And, um, so I'll leave it at that. Um, what I want to do is speak to, to the board um, from a human perspective here. And despite all of this that's going on, there's one important thing that we're that, that's happening here that I want to shine a light on it, and that is this road did exist and serve the people of, of Calais. That road was surveyed 160 years ago, and that's what it looked like then. Since then, a lot of generations have, have passed, and a lot of changes have come to this town, and one of those changes that has, that's come naturally to this town is that road. It was absolutely no use to anybody on the, for the town or, or its residents. It became the whole. Ladies and gentlemen, could you be quiet, please? Thank you. And let the speaker speak with you. Doug, please. Doug and Gary. Doug and Gary, we can't hear. Thank you. And since uh, since it was accepted as a legal roadway, it's it's evolved into serve other purposes. And clearly, 
it has uh, ceased to become a road long ago. We're, that was 160 years ago. Since then, there, this is the, uh, the third generation of, of children that live there now. And now we, we're trying to safeguard that land because it's, it's dangerous to have a right of way. Um, and what happens, there's a small handful of people that come out of the woodwork to oppose that. And I understand in small towns, that's the kind of thing that happens. Um, but so I'm up here to try to put some perspective on how long ago that road existed and what it, it's become now. And what are we doing here by, by questioning that? How, how can, what legal tricks are we going to break out to, what, to keep it and turn it into nothing? It's not even a passable roadway. And we all know that. We, we've all seen it. So I guess I just wanted to say that out loud, that it, it was um, served its purpose a long, long, long time ago. It wasn't like 50 years ago. It was 160 years ago that was surveyed. So, um, I have a little question for you. So, sure. when did it fall out of use, though? It was survey on this. Right. Sure. When did it fall out of use, do you believe? Right. Yeah, but no. Sure. Right. Well, you give it 50 years. That's a question. Oh, yeah. When yeah. did it fall out of use? It may have come into being 160 years ago, but when did it, right. it, its use fall away? Right, right. Yeah, I don't know. I heard um, the gentleman, the surveyor, um, say, look at the aerial maps from. 1940, that it appears that the there was, were walking paths on either side, but no, no, that's that's a grand assumption. You cannot assume that that was used for anything. You can't look at an aerial map from 1940, 80 years ago, and say, well, this was probably foot traffic. This was probably carriage traffic. So I understand your point. I, mean, I, I, no, I was just a question. At some point, I was oh. just wondering if you had any information. No, but I don't. I don't accept uh, the 1940 as that being a use. With looking at an aerial survey, especially if it's going to turn these good folks' driveway into a. Anyway, that's that's all. I Thank appreciate you. Any time. other questions by the board of this witness? No. Thank you for it. Thank you, folks. Is there anyone else who would like to testify? Okay. I I I, yes. I would. Okay, yeah. please come up then. Thank you. Tell us your name and please go ahead. Yes, yes, sir. My name is Joshua Schultz. Gary Schultz is my dad. Joel Schultz is my mom. I grew up in mom and dad's house right there. So I've and I now live in my grandmother's house across the road. So I've been there for you know over 40 years. Um, and I decided, well, first I'll just I wanted to do this. Um, and I'm just doing this because dad asked me to because he, I'm the computer guy in our house. We'll send this to you guys electronically, but. It occurred to us, like recently, that we had never really submitted pictures. We'd done a walk, but I think that at least this some uh, lady here hadn't been on it, and so the walk. So I thought, you know, maybe we should like send some pictures. And we did take these pictures um, when the survey came out. I was able to look and see where it deviated. I made sure the pictures were down the side where it was in the road. So these are depicting um, the extent of the damage to the road. I did not go up closer to the stone wall, like closer to the area where it was deviating. Um, and, and I, uh, Tim, the, uh, the surveyor, he mentioned that, it, you know, it's, it's washed out pretty much the entire way of that steep grade. Um, but I wanted to get some pictures on the record here of that. And I'm like, asking, are you asking this to be in as Yeah, sure. And, I, and I'll, I'll um, I got a copy for everybody here. Um, and then I'll, I'll also, Denise, I'll get you this electronically. Right. So, so it actually might be a couple extras here. I, I, got, I wanted a copy for me. And that's it. And, this, and I also got one for... Uh, uh, Mr. McLean. So, um, so it just has some pictures here of, of that roadway, and I tried to do my best to. Um, I, I, I labeled them so you all can read the labels, and I tried to do my best, even if there's some goofy ones of me standing in there, to show like the width and, and height of this washout area. And even up closer to the, I mean, it's, it's bad all the way through there. It's wet. Um, even when you get outside the gully, it's wet, and there's rills and gullies going every which way even on the outside of the road. So it's just a, this is rugged terrain up there. Um, and- uh, Gary, is it-, it, is it Josh, yeah. Josh. Yes, Josh. okay, yep. Josh. I've been Josh. called much worse. Yeah, <laughs> Josh is, so it is your position, your statement, that these pictures are taken in the right way. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. And, um, and, and, it, probably if you were a stranger walking along up there, 
Didn't know there was a road there. In most cases, you probably wouldn't even know it was a road. You probably think it's a big washed out ravine. I mean, I don't, I, I, you all have seen it. So, um, you know, I, I think during our walk, none of us really end up walking in the road pretty much at any point. Maybe a couple times we deviate into it, but most of the walk, we were like out on the edge where it was safer. Um, so with that, I, uh, I, you know, you, you guys can all can read through these pictures, and they'll, they'll you'll get them electronically, so you can post them online too. That'll save you from yeah. the scan and stuff. So I'll yeah, that'd be better. Make it easy for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, first of all, I just wanted to, you know, talk a little bit about the the survey. I know that the aerial, the survey referenced a lot um, the aerial photo that was taken in 1941. Um, the in 1942, there was a map, it was actually one of the earlier maps, I think there was a 39 one, but there was a 1942 map. It looked like it might have been the first time when the town of Callis first started kind of, excuse me, kind of formalizing their submittals to the state of Vermont for, for what their town maps were. Um, what I saw on there on the 1942 maps, so the first one that was like formal had like a legend and everything to it. TH7, so a year after that aerial photo was taken, uh, I'm sorry, 1941, the aerial photo was 1942, so a year before that aerial photo was taken, in 1941, TH7 was, was, was tagged as untraveled, it, that was what it said. So it, in 1941, a year before that, we know that it was an untraveled road based on the, well, at least the record that was given to the Agency of Transportation. Um, we also know, because I, I like history, I talked to my dad, so, um, and, also talk to, um, and even like Colonel Bain, and I know his daughter-in-law is here, um, but just hearing these old stories from back in the day, um, nobody used that road, um, and these are, so these are, now we're going back. I'm talking to people that are now, pa you know, passed on, and well, my, not obviously on my dad, but, um, but, and they talked about how that old car farm was always accessed, and I know this road doesn't go to the car farm, that's in the, the survey, but, um, it talks about how that was accessed from the Woodbury Mountain Road. And, um, and, and that also is with what my dad says when he used to come up um, and visit. And again, we said this during the walk, but I don't think it was, can count as testimony, but I'll say it now. When my dad used to walk over there, he was six years old after the war, they, they came over and dad was a little kid and um, dad said they had to walk through a brook. Like you couldn't tell there was a road down there going up. So they walked through a brook to get up the field where the house now is. Um, the stonework, the stone wall that, um, that was alongside the driveway and there's also stonework down around the brook down towards the bottom of mom and dad's driveway. And there's also some stone piles. That was me and dad also helped. Um, so I, when my friends in high school were playing Super Nintendo, I was out playing with rocks because I love doing rock work. So that stone work there, I'm not gonna say that there wasn't a stone wall there. All I know is that there wasn't one and I built one there alongside mom and dad's driveway. And there's stone steps you'll see and other stone walls and in multiple places that don't look like there should be a stone wall. It doesn't make sense and that's because you had a high school guy out there doing it. So, um, but just so you're aware of that, I just, you know, and, and I, I can understand why Tim wouldn't know that. Um, the, so, I, I was thinking a lot about this, and I just wanted to, I just wanted to say that we're talking about this road, and I just want to, I guess, ask the question why. So we're talking about, like, why not discontinue? And I know that um, one of the things that um, Joel McLean had mentioned was that public, I think it was public need and public good. I think I might be getting that phrase slightly wrong, but it was about the public's, what good does this serve the public kind of thing. And um, I, I was thinking a lot about it and I was thinking, you know, there's, so first of all, let just, let's just for the sake of argument, I, I agree, I, I, I have some issues with the survey, but that aside, let's just say for the sake of argument or discussion that this, this road terminates right there at the stone wall. That's 49 and a half feet of access to lot 22, I think it is. That lot has hundreds of feet of access off the Woodbury Mountain Road, which is how everybody accesses lot 22. If, if anybody in lot 22 ever decided to post their land, say for example, this TA7 doesn't give anybody access on their property. It it's just takes you to there, it takes you right to the edge of their line 
just like the Woodbury Mountain Road follows the edge of their line. And so it's not like this is buying the public like this access to this property that the public doesn't already have. So, and the public already enjoys the access from the Woodbury Mountain Road, and that's how it's been accessed, like I mentioned before, for, I'm gonna say over 100 years, because um, that road was not noticeable in the 40s, um, at least it was not traveled, and my dad says, if he doesn't even, he couldn't tell over the road there, he's walking through a brook to get up there. Um, so, when you ask the question why, so when you all are deliberating, I think that would be a really good thing, like, well, why? Like, here we are, we're, you know, we're talking about surveys, we're talking about this, but like, Let's just take a breath and step back, like, why? What is this buying the, the public in the town of Callis? It's really buying them, it's granting them access across mom and dad's property. That's what you're buying the, the people. And mom and dad's property, and Mr. Lilly, I don't know, I mean, I know he's, and, and he's right. Doug has been up there hunting, because I've seen him up there hunting. When I was bird hunting, he was deer hunting. Um, I don't think you knew I saw you, but he was gone. Oh, there he is. But, but he was up there, and... Um, and the, uh, he was there because it's not posted. Dad's never posted his land, we've never posted our property, and we don't intend to post our property. So the public access across mom and dad's land is already there, and even if mom and dad did post it, like, which we're not playing on it, like not, it's not in there, we, but they still have access through the Woodbury Mountain Road to get around there, and there's parking up there. And, you know, it's just, that's, so you're not, we're not like really losing something for the town. There are not snowmobiles that go up there. Um, Dad allows snowmobiles on his property. The snowmobiles don't have, don't want to go up TH7, and they're also very good about asking Dad, like, where where would you like us to go? Can we go on your land? Dad's like, yeah, sure, and he just keeps away from the house, and everything's been fine for as long as I can remember. The snowmobile trail has been on Mom and Dad's land, and so we're not trying to stop snowmobiles. We're not trying to stop the, and you know the Boy Scouts go up there. They haven't in a couple of years, but they used to go up there every year and camp. Public are welcome. So, in fact, more than once, if they're going up there, and, and they don't use TH7, by the way, because <laughs> it's hard to walk. <laughs> so, um, so there's that, the, 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 the why. Um, when we started this, one thing I noticed, they started with this process, is the folks that have come out to oppose this have been to the same, there's a couple people on the select board now, I know at least Denise and John were here. It's the exact same contingent of people that opposed the ancient roads. To the, I think, almost to the T. And, um, and I know TH7 is not an ancient road. It has a, it's a class four road. I understand that. But in spirit, it kind of is. It's one of these like forgotten roads that is, it's, nobody uses it, it just lingers on the map, it's been untraveled at least officially since 1941, and it's, it's, it's just one of these roads that are just there that have, are, are a nuisance to one family. Um, and I, I would even dare say that there's some ancient roads that have been discontinued that probably would serve as a better asset to the town, or would have served as a better asset to the town, or a nicer place to walk, easier access, you probably actually could walk on the road and not down the gully that were discontinued. And the reason is, is because the town came out in probably record numbers back then. And, um, and it wasn't that long ago. I mean, it was years ago, but it wasn't that long ago. Um, I, this upstairs was full, and it went out into the outside into the road. Mm -hmm. And it was an overwhelming majority of the town that said, discontinue these. Now, we don't want to. property you're talking about, they promote for ancient roads? The ancient roads. Yes, that was our property. There was, there was. Yes. Yeah, so there was some on the Baines property, and they, and they, they discontinued a lot of the, I think, I, I don't know about, I don't want to speak, because I, I know some of them required a process, but I know a great majority, if not all of them, were discontinued. And, we, we had a vote uh, on the mass discontinuance, right. yeah. that's what it was for, and then we had individual votes right. based on recommendations of the Ancient Roads Committee. Yeah, there was a whole, we had a committee. Mark. Yep. Then, and, and I guess I'm just, you know, given, given the, 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 the facts here and the fact that, like, this has not been a public good, it's not hasn't served as a public good and need, it, it, it just takes people across mom and dad's property, and it hasn't been a public, a public need or a public good. It, what it has been, though, is it's, it's, it has been um, 
It's been something that we get the mud trucks coming up there and ATVs and they come up there and we got our kids out there playing. So we're talking about public need and public good. I guess I would just ask, and I think I said this in my last testimony, so I'll just repeat it, I, I know. But we've got 17 members of the family and more generations to come and that's part of the public and they're the ones that are affected. The folks that, have, that are opposing this, they were outvoted, but they also didn't, um, they don't come over there. I haven't seen any of them over there walking on that property, walking up that road. And so they, a lot of them live on the other side of town. And, and so it's, it's, you know, the folks that do live nearby, a lot of them have written in letters, uh, uh, um, not opposing, but supporting the discontinuance. And those are the ones that actually, nobody uses it. Um, even the Schultzes don't use, I don't use TH7. I think I've been in it, like the first time I probably walked the whole thing was when we went up there with Reed and I wanted to challenge myself to see if I could walk all the way up to 87 and I kind of thought, well, if we're going to walk it, let's walk it, you know, and, but I don't use it. I go up the other way, all, a lot prettier walks and easier ways to get through there. Um, I guess I'll just say that, um, again, if it's discontinued, there's, there's not, there, people are not coming out in droves. There's been a good, you guys have done a long process. You guys have had plenty of people giving the opportunity to write in. I haven't seen one person write in or stand up here and testify saying, I want TH7 open because I use it. Because I, I want to go up there. I want to keep using it. I don't want to take it away. This public need, this public good. I haven't seen anybody do that. Everybody's just clinging to it. I think of this, that old whole, that old t-shirt in the bottom of my drawer that I go through and I can't seem to just throw it away. Cause I'm like, well, then all of a sudden one day you're playing on your drawer. I'm like, why am I keeping this? I never wear it. I don't really like it that much. It's just taking up space and I get rid of the thing and then I don't miss it, you know, and it's, I, that's what this reminds me of. And, and, um, and I guess I just, if, if it's discontinued, you will change the lives of our family. I miss a lot of anxiety around this road. There's a lot of, it's safety. It's the, all these kids. And that's the positive. I, I, I really feel like the positive is going to way outweigh the negative of this. And this day and age, if you ever have a, a decision that you get to make like that, in this day and age especially, it's like, well, thank God. You know, I mean, it, 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 that, it, that's what I think. Um, so I, I just wanted to end, and this, this picture was taken down, um, down close to mom and dad's. It's, you know, you go in the woods a little ways. I'll, I'll show you all. Um, this is TH7. This is that, and this is on the survey. This is, you can't walk through there. It's washed out, and this is one of the pictures that's in there. So you guys have this, I'll still enter it as, as yeah. But this is what the town, this is the town when folks say the town asset, this is what they're talking, and this is the way it looks like up there. I mean, again, you all have seen it, and you'll see it in the pictures. This isn't like, it wasn't hard for me to find this. I could have taken any number of these pictures in here. You could frame it and hang it up. I know, I, yeah, right? yeah. I just wanted to show you all this. And I know Tim, I see Tim smiling, and he was up there surveying it. This is after Tim surveyed it. Yeah, yeah. This is after Tim surveyed and actually, you know, and I understand had to cut some trees so he could get his traverse through there. And um, this is this is the gully and the washout that, that folks are talking about. And um, this is what we're the town, the asset. Again, if I was walking, I probably wouldn't know that was a road if I was a hiker. And hikers can come up here. They can. It's not posted, and they can walk around it. And we're not looking that access through the Schultz property that terminates at the other line. They have it now. We're not looking to get rid of that. We're not looking to stop people from coming on our land. And then I took this picture, it's also on TH7, but I wanted to show you all, this is what, this is, what, this is the good. This is what we're trying, this is the public need, this is the public good. These are the ones that use it. Nobody's written in saying I use TH7, but these we have. The lower the, section. The lower section. And the upper section on mom and dad's land we don't use it because it's too hard to use. So we walk around, we walk on mom and dad's property. And this is, so I'll show you, actually here, I'll just quick show the, the, the audience here. These are all, and there's kids missing, by the way. There's two, two teenagers that are at soccer practice, and um, there's, it's 11 kids. And these are just the ones that are locally live here. We have four others I'm getting the number right. Four others that come and visit in the summertime and, and Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, but TH7 goes straight here. This is where Tim had mentioned that the, the driveway curls around to the barn. This is mowed. 
This is mom and dad's front yard. And I asked people, I said, I asked, and every, I've been to every single commission meeting they've had. And if I didn't go, it was because I didn't know about it. But I think I've been to all of them. And in every single commission meeting, it, there wasn't one time where anybody said, this should ever be a road. Even the trails committee had a, had a note in there saying, we don't ever want to make this a trail unless the Schultz has ever asked for it or wanted to. Nobody ever said this should ever be a road. And I think I even asked at least the Conservation Commission, would you guys ever want to run a bulldozer up and take out mom and dad's front yard here where it's been like this forever, you know? And, and they're like, no, absolutely, absolutely not. Josh, could yeah, go I ahead. I'm sorry. out of consideration for the third, fourth, fifth generation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you kind of conclude? Yes, I'm, <laughs> yes, thank you. So the conclusion, guys, this is the good. This is the good. This is what we're trying to do here. We're trying to, and keeping it on the map, even as a trail, it's still going to be on the map. People will still look at it and think, oh, I can get up there. I can go. I take my truck up there. I, I just want to discontinue it. They have access to the neighbors already, and the people will still have access to mom and dad's land even after, long after this is gone. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna, you can <laughs> enter these in. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. This chair is. Miss, um, probably by design. I, I know how you guys are. Right. <laughs> you get it right. <laughs> you, need, you need a cane, you know. Right. Reed, please. Would you like to testify, Reed? The chair's bad when you're switching out. Hey, Reed, we don't want any accidents. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I want to say, Josh, you do a very good presentation. Um, I, but I, do, I do feel compelled to say something about the difference between the ancient roads issues and um, and this type of an issue. The ancient roads were almost entirely roads. I don't know. It was, I don't remember how many there were. were at least forty. Uh, entirely roads that no one knew about them, or that no one knew that the town had a claim to them. And so there was a big fairness issue in dealing with the ancient roads issue um, that doesn't apply to um, whether it doesn't apply to the issue of whether to keep or discontinue or, or change classification of an existing known town road that's on the map. So I just want to point that out. Um, and it was a wrenching process. Because a lot of people were very upset that, to discover that there were roads on their land that they didn't even know about. And they had, they had title searches, but they didn't go back that far, and they didn't include that. Um, so we, we had to really bend over backwards. Um, on behalf of those landowners. Whereas in this case, um, Gary built that house uh, on, on a, a known town road, and uh, uh, it's still a town road, um, but he wasn't, it's not as if he was unaware of it. <coughs> Have I? Made it reasonably clear? Yes, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very, very clear. Is there anyone else who would like to testify? I think at this point, Joe, let me let me ask you, my inclination at this point is to close the public hearing, explain what our options are, and... Uh, I do have a question, Mr. Chair. What? Um, did the Trails Committee submit Anything, any updates? Uh, we got They're update. not any updates. They submitted a, um, let's see, Trails Committee sent an email on June 11th of 2022. It's exhibit number 13. Um, do you want me to read it? Yeah. 
On behalf of the trail committee, I would like to inform you that the committee at its annual meeting on June 5 voted to pass the following motion regarding the petition to discontinue or reclassify Town Highway 7. The Trails Committee recommends that the select board take no action on the Schultz family request and that this no action decision is underlined by a commitment from the Trails Committee not to pursue a public trail on this property. Any other comments? So, Joe, my inclination at this point is to close the public hearing and explain the process going forward. Mm -hmm. Is that all right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Before I do that, while well, the hearing is still open, do you guys have questions you'd like to ask? Uh, yeah, point of, point of clarification. If we, if, if we close, and this is, yeah, because I, I want to understand what closing means. If we close the hearing, then I understand um, Joe will explain to us legally what the legal process is, and that, and that involves private deliberation right. from the board. Yeah. If we, at, at which time we now will have the whole body of evidence. Right. Right. If we have questions, then can you just, can one of you explain the process if a question comes up or a point of clarification that we have that isn't clear from the record, how do we, what I understood is a couple, maybe even July when we met, is that we would, we might possibly open the hearing back up, ask Tim, ask somebody to come back and testify, help us answer the question, and then we go back in? Right. Okay. So, so and I need a clarification to add to what Sharon yeah. was asking. Are we closing tonight's hearing? No. no. Closing the public We're hearing. closing the entire hearing, and, uh, we're, and we're closing the record? Yes, but we would okay. do what that we would let, let me lay this out. The, the reason I ask is because we just got the survey and the public may have just seen it and how do they provide commentary. That's what happened to them. That's what the okay. nice here okay. is for. Okay, okay. Right. so Thank here, you. let me try to take a shot at this and go help me out. So what I'd like to do is close the public hearing. That means we've taken all the testimony, we've got all the written material that we're going to get. And it's now the record. We have to make our decision based on the record. We have three options. So what we would do, we'll close the public hearing. Then at that point, we kind of act like a court. We then go into, we, we go into, I guess it's not really, deliberation. In deliberation. We deliberate. That's not in public any more than a judge deliberates in public. We take all the evidence, we read it, we discuss it. And we reach a conclusion, we reach a decision, and we write a decision. We it's on we write a decision which explains what we're doing and why we're doing it, just like a court's decision. Correct. We have three options. We could keep the right of way as a class four road. We could uh, discontinue the road. We could class reclassify the right of way as a trail. And whatever we do, the standard is... You could upgrade have, it to a class three. We, <laughs> we could. We could, is that it ha our decision has to be expressly based on the legal standard for what we are doing is reflecting the public good, necessity, and convenience of the town. So we can't just say, oh, we're doing this because it meets the public good, convenience, and necessity of the town. We have to explain ourselves. We have to relate it to the evidence that's before us. Now, my understanding is, let's say we all get together in this, this select board, and we start deliberating, and we realize there's something that's really important to the decision that we didn't hear about. We thought we'd heard everything, but we didn't. And we want to ask Reed Charrington a question. Or we want to ask our surveyor a question. We have to, we can't do that in private. We have to reopen the public hearing, notice that we're reopening it, give all the generations that are here a chance to come back and hear our question and the answer and make any comment they want to make. Then we would reclose the hearing. I'm not saying that will happen. I'm saying it could happen. We don't know. Well, that's what happened tonight. Yeah. That's, right. that's what happened. Well, we never closed the hearing. We never closed the hearing. Right. We, 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 so we, we continued it. Okay. And how many days after? Is it 30 days or 40 days? It's 60 days. 60 days.
60 days. Right? Get 60 days from closing the public hearing? Okay, so, Joe, have I said it right? Yes. Okay, I so have to yes. close it. Yeah, because we have to enter. You have to enter the right. Bank. We're going to enter. Is, I don't know what to exactly call this, um, Josh. Call it his, I mean, his name. But he's saying it's Gary's picture or something, right? Are they, who's Josh? Some yeah. middle, like Josh. Who took the pictures? Oh, um, my, uh, Kristen, my wife, and then Charlie took some. Okay. So it's primarily. So I'm just going to call it Josh Schultz. Yeah. Pictures and. Submitted by my parents, though. I did it for dad. Dad asked me to go up there and take them. So, yeah, yeah that's why it's from my dad. All right. So, so it's. Okay. Don't forget to send them to his electronic. Yeah. Yes, I, I will not. I'll and get to you. Do we need to enter these separately? They're in here. These are just bigger versions. I don't think we need to. I don't think you need to separately enter them. Those can just be. They can have uh, a good the monitoring exhibits. Okay, okay, so suddenly we're making motions to enter exhibits. So we don't, I don't, we don't need a motion. We just have a motion. We didn't. We have it. Okay, now I am therefore asking for a motion to close the public hearing. So, so moved. Second? I think you got a motion and a second. Right? Right. All those in favor of closing the public hearing on TH7, on this TH7 matter? Aye. 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 Okay, so the hearing is closed. I cannot thank you enough for the patience and the respect for the process that you have shown me. Yeah. I know this is the kind of thing that excites passions, and I think you've just been just wonderful. Yeah. So thank you so much. We will do our very best by you. That's all I can say, our very best. And we, and according to legal standards. Yeah, we will act according to the legal standard. And is there any other comment or final statement by a member of the board? Okay, no, other than thank you all. You've been very kind to each other, and that's really important. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? No, I, I thought we were going to. Do we have more to do? Do we want to deliberate at all? No. No, no. no. So what we're going to do, what we have to do, is we'll take as I we would say before we adjourn, so we will find a evening when we can deliberate. You'll be with us. Do you come to the deliberation? I think you should be there. I do think you should. We have a clock ticking where we have to sixty days from today to render a decision. To render a decision. So, okay. It's a 60 day statutory period. There isn't a consequence for failing to meet the 60 days. So, so it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a, an advisory. Right. right. And we can't get any more trouble? Well, and yeah, just for people, yeah, for people who are keeping, keeping score at home. Right. We have a lot of other things. Okay. Right. I know. Well, that's my advice. That's why I said that. Yeah. We have a motion on the floor to adjourn. So All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, thank kids. You. Your kids nice are to meet you, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.